You know, when you really think about things, it's kind of crazy to think that we go from this, like a stored fat in our body, into energy. It's pretty wild. And when you're intermittent fasting or doing a keto diet, this process of taking this and turning it into energy becomes really, really important. But especially when we factor in how this can just kind of disappear off of our body. I mean, it can literally be around your belly, it can be around your entire body, it can be on your legs, and it just melts off. But let's talk about how this really happens, specifically with fasting and a little bit surrounding the world of keto too. Well, I don't need this anymore. Hey, if you're watching this channel, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, specifically surrounding the world of ketosis and fasting, but a bunch of other content peppered in between as well. I also wanna make sure you check out highleat.com so you can get the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit sciencey, but I want you to stick with me because everything's gonna make sense. I'm going to try to condense it the best that I can to make it really understandable so that you have some true motivation to keep on intermittent fasting and to keep on doing ketosis. Because when you know how the body works, it just makes things a lot more fun. So what we're gonna focus on is something known as hormone-sensitive lipase. Hormone-sensitive lipase is a specific enzyme that really allows fat burning to occur. In fact, scientists for a long time have said that hormone-sensitive lipase is the epicenter of fat burning. It is the one place that fatty acid oxidation, fat breakdown, can occur within the body. Fatty acid breakdown or fat burning cannot occur unless it is at the site of hormone-sensitive lipase. Okay, so what that means is we need this enzyme. But the cool thing is, is recent science is starting to show that it's a little bit broader than that. So I'm gonna give you the full understanding. Now this hormone-sensitive lipase is important to you if you're fasting or you're doing keto because it has an inverse relationship with what's called insulin. Okay, insulin is the absorptive hormone. So whenever we eat, we have a spike in insulin. Okay, whenever our insulin levels are low, this amazing hormone-sensitive lipase is really high. And whenever our insulin levels are high, hormone-sensitive lipase is low. So even if we're in a calorie deficit, we could be in a situation where if our insulin levels are consistently elevated, it's really hard to activate this fat burning enzyme. So let's take a look a little bit more at how it works. So when you don't have insulin present, you have another hormone known as glucagon. Glucagon encourages the breakdown of proteins, it encourages the breakdown of fats, it encourages the release of glycogen. Basically, it is the burning hormone. Without insulin, glucagon is released. But there's something even more important we want to focus on, and those are catecholamines. Okay, so we're talking adrenaline, we're talking epinephrine, norepinephrine. These things that we think only have a role when we get nervous. But you see, when we're fasting, or we're in a calorie deficit, or we're working out, we have an abundance of catecholamines. We have a lot of adrenaline and epinephrine. Well, guess what? The adrenaline and the epinephrine in conjunction with the glucagon, they activate hormone-sensitive lipase. You see, they phosphorylate hormone-sensitive lipase. Now, phosphorylation is where we're basically altering the structure of something through kind of protein manipulation by adding a phosphorus molecule. In other words, we're just changing it enough so that it becomes activated. And when hormone-sensitive lipase becomes activated, Fat burning is occurring, so we want to activate this. You can start putting it together. Fasting, catecholamines, epinephrine, equals the activation of the hormone sensitive lipase, equals fat burning, okay? But we're gonna break it down a little bit more. Now what we have to remember is that hormone sensitive lipase is called hormone sensitive lipase for a reason. It is hormone sensitive. You see, lipase literally just stands for an enzyme. Lipase means a enzyme that breaks down lipids, it breaks down fats but hormone-sensitive lipase is a lipase that is very dependent on being activated by specific hormones. In this case, glucagon and epinephrine, just to name a couple. Now, the way that this whole process works is you go into fasting, or you go into keto, or you go into a workout, and you have a higher degree of these catecholamines. And what these catecholamines do is they act upon something known as beta-adrenergenic receptors. Okay, beta-adrenergenic receptors are what receive the catecholamines to start this whole cascading signal to start lipolysis, to start fat burning. 
Now, beta adrenogenic receptors, maybe you've heard of beta blockers before, the pharmaceutical. Okay, beta blockers are given to people that have blood pressure issues. They're given to a lot of times uh, military snipers. They're given to people that are going to be anxious and can't have the effects of the catecholamines. So normally, like adrenaline would give you the shakes, right? Like, too much adrenaline or too much epinephrine would make you shaky. It would make you kind of freak out. Well, beta blockers stop that process because they block the beta adrenergenic receptors. So they make it so catecholamines are still existent, but they're not acting upon the beta adrenergenic receptors. This entire process of activating the beta adrenergenic receptors turns on the process of activating protein kinase A. It turns on the phosphorylation process. Now, protein kinase A, although a very complex enzyme, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time breaking it down. I'm just gonna tell you in this case, protein kinase A is very important because protein kinase A, kinase, A-S-E, that suffix means it's an enzyme. Protein kinase A means it goes and it breaks down or changes certain proteins. In this case, it changes proteins that are very important to fat burning, okay? So how it works is inside a fat cell, okay? In our adipose tissue, our fat cells, it's a lipid, right? Well, inside that cell, in the cytoplasm of that cell, lives a dormant friend that we know of called hormone-sensitive lipase. He's hanging out inside a fat cell, ready to rock and roll, but he's hormone sensitive. He's not activated until he's actually acted upon by a hormone. So what happens is he's protected inside the cell. And on the outside of this lipid, there's something known as perilipin. Okay, this perilipin is also something that protects and stops the potential activation of that hormone sensitive lipase. Okay, so now that we've activated protein kinase A, this goes along and it phosphorylates both perilipin and hormone-sensitive lipase essentially at the same time. What this means is it changes the structure and breaks them down enough so that the perilipin no longer shields the lipid and allows the hormone-sensitive lipase to come out and do its job. So hormone-sensitive lipase, this master fat burner that's just waiting on reserve to get activated. He's like the reserve forces, like the reserve military just waiting to get called upon. He's sitting there, now perilipin is deactivated because it's been phosphorylated, and we can actually activate hormone-sensitive lipase and thus begins fat burning. So now that the fat loss process has started, we can look more into the actual triglyceride breakdown and what's actually happening when it comes down to energy, okay? So we used to think that it all was hormone-sensitive lipase. Like if you watch any videos, if you watch, uh, listen to any podcasts about fat burning, they're all gonna talk about hormone-sensitive lipase. Researchers are even gonna talk about hormone-sensitive lipase. But it wasn't until about 2004 that researchers started to discover that it was beyond hormone-sensitive lipase. There was more enzymes that actually made it more of a three-step process to burn fat, specifically when it came down to body fat. You see, hormone-sensitive lipase was studied a lot because it acted upon a lot of different substrates. You see, it didn't just act upon skeletal uh, intramuscular triglycerides, like fat cells like that. It acted upon cholesterol, steroid hormones, all these other kinds of fat-related things. So HSL has a high substrate affinity. It works for a lot of different things. But when we start looking at fat cells and actually breaking down intramuscular triglycerides and skeletal fat and that, or skeletal muscle fat and that kind of whole area there, then we realize that there's something else called adipose triglyceride lipase. And adipose triglyceride lipase is also an enzyme, lipase. Adipose triglyceride lipase takes the fat from basically the storage fat cell and starts to break it down. It starts to break it down and you take a triglyceride, which is a storage form of fat, okay, and you have triglyceride. So you've got tri three fatty acids bound to a glycerol molecule. That's what makes a triglyceride. So adipose triglyceride lipase takes that triglyceride and it takes it and it breaks it down into a diglycerol. So you've gone from a triglyceride into a diglyceride, okay? So basically from here, we have released one fatty acid and now we need another enzyme. We need diglyceride lipase to break down that diglyceride. Okay, we've gone from a triglyceride to a diglyceride. So a new enzyme comes in. And this is where hormone-sensitive lipase plays a role. Hormone-sensitive lipase can act upon that diglyceride lipase a lot easier. So then it's broken down into one more thing, monoglycerides. Okay, so basically now you've taken a triglyceride, broken off one fatty acid. Now you've taken a diglyceride, broken off another fatty acid. So you're left with one fatty acid and a glycerol molecule. So now we have monoglyceride lipase that comes in and its only job is to separate 
that one last fatty acid from the glycerol. So the fatty acid breaks away, and the glycerol breaks away, and they both go and they do their thing. Fat burning has now occurred. The glycerol goes to the liver, and believe it or not, actually gets converted into glucose. Yes, fat still turns into glucose because that glycerol goes through the gluconeogenesis pathway where it creates sugar or carbohydrate from its own storage form. So glycerol, yes, still actually can convert into glycogen. It can still convert into glucose. It's going through gluconeogenesis. But anyway, the fatty acid that's left is the one that ends up getting converted into ketones or gets converted into whatever, or is used directly by the skeletal muscle in a fat-adapted person. So essentially, what we've broken down now is that it's not just hormone-sensitive lipase. We used to think that it was purely the catecholamines acting upon HSL. But now we know that it's the catecholamines that activate the adipose triglycerides and then also act upon the hormone-sensitive lipase. So essentially what we've concluded here is that fasting and the release of catecholamines, like through coffee drinking, yes, caffeine, through intense workouts, through ketosis, and through fasting, can have a double whammy effect on actually mobilizing and allowing the breakdown of fat to occur. Now this is a very, very, very complex topic that we could go into a lot of detail on, but this is a general summary. So in short, when someone asks you if calories matter when you're fasting, you can say, yes, they do, but I can promise you that I'm burning more fat in my fasting state time after time than you are in between your meals. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos or you have comments, put them down in the comment section below. I'll see you soon.